Hello, everybody. Todd here with Sun Control. I am here with Chris Dunker, the co-chair of Firefighters for Healing. And we're here at this amazing new apartment um, that they have for uh, some burn survive victims here. And I'm going to let Chris tell a little story. Um, yeah. Cam, it kind of came full circle. What was it? A, a, was it last year, the year before when you had your truck tinted? <laughs> and I learned all about this foundation and now here we are, and it's like really, really neat to see what you guys have done. Yeah. So yeah, just tell it, we'll just chat and tell everybody sure. what you guys got going on. Well, thank you for taking the time to come here and thanks for the years of uh, tinting my vehicles. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but it's cool to see you go beyond that and come out to the community and do things like what your team is doing here for us today, which is tinting some of the windows and adding some logos and things to our windows. But um, yeah, so Firefighters for Healing was born uh, about a decade ago from a Minneapolis firefighter who was burned in a house explosion. And while he was recovering down here one block away from where we are today at HCMC, um, he met two young boys that were burn survivors that came in to the hospital. There was a three-year-old and a five-year-old, and the three-year-old found the lighter uh, for the, they were living in a tent because their parents had fallen on hard times. Oh. And um, the three-year-old lit the tent on fire the five-year-old uh, pu pulled him out and they were both very, very badly burned. And from that experience, when they were rushed into the hospital, Jake, our founder, um, who no longer then could be a firefighter after his accident um, in a house explosion, you know, he was struggling with even wanting to live. And then he sees these two young boys come in and he realizes that these kids are gonna struggle for the rest of their lives and who's gonna be an advocate for them. So it was interesting because in that moment, he knew that his mission in life changed from being a second generation firefighter to now helping kids that are burn survivors. And so he founded the nonprofit Firefighters for Healing. And uh, I wasn't a firefighter. I'm not a hero first responder in any way. Uh, I went down to a benefit for mm -hmm. him down at Seven Sushi. And uh, the community rallied and said, hey, we're gonna you know, help this firefighter out that was burned. And of course, being the person he is, he took the donations from that night and you know, started sending kids to a burn camp out in, in mm -hmm. Colorado. And what he realized was, you know, why are we sending kids to a burn camp? Why don't we start our own? And so he asked if I'd help um, figure out how to do that and raise money. And so I joined the board, um, I guess it's eight or nine or 10 years ago now, and as the board chair, and, and I've been the board chair ever since. So um, we've really grown tremendously. It started with the vision for Camp Red, stands for Realize Every Dream. And we realized our dream about six years ago of Camp Red up in Cross Lake at Camp Knutson. And every year since it's been growing in numbers, we now have uh, so many kids that we have to probably break it into to have two camps, a summer camp for kids and then a camp for kids and families. Um, it's just been incredible to see the growth. And, and, uh, and then when we realized that dream, speaking of this building, we said, well, you know, we went back to the doctors and, at Hennepin Healthcare and, and nurses and we said, well, what, what more can we do? And they said, well, we need housing. And they said, well, well what, what do you need housing for? And I said, well, because if imagine your child is a burn survivor and you're from Fargo and your kid fell into a bonfire and now he's gonna spend the next couple of months down at, at HCMC, you know, where are you gonna stay? Are you gonna travel back and forth to Fargo? No. Are you gonna be able to find a short-term housing in Minneapolis? No. <laughs> so these people, they stay, these parents, in the rooms with their kids and basically bathe themselves in, in the sink. And that's just not good. They need to rest, they need relaxation. Um, you know, they need to be there for their kids and their loved ones. So what we did is we, we partnered with Kraus Anderson and we developed some apartments that were one block away from HQ. It's called HQ Apartments, uh, one block away from HCMC. And we started with three apartments, we grew to seven apartments, and we realized there was a great need. So we said, well, let's go find a, a model like this. It's in somewhere in the United States and, and we'll go build something similar. And we couldn't find one. Really? There was no housing that's for first responders and burn survivors specifically anywhere in the US. But we did find one and it was up in Vancouver. So Jake and I hopped on a flight. We went up and met with the, the folks at the BC Burn Fund Center in British Columbia and we toured their facility, spent three days with them, got their fundraising campaign, their building schematics, everything. How did they do this? And they gave it all to us and said, here, go do this. 
Oh. And so we came back here and, and uh, at our Red Tie Gala, we stood on stage about six years ago and we asked, is there anyone here that would believe in this enough to help fund an exploratory mission to figure out if we should build something and where we could build it? And we walked off that stage with the half a million dollars in donations. So we knew there was enough support behind us to go, go build it, but we didn't know where. And so interestingly, we, we, we just knew that when you stack rank the priorities, we, we had to be close to the hospital because no one's gonna leave in an Uber in the middle of winter, drive 20 minutes to go stay somewhere and then 20 minutes back, you know, they're just not gonna do it. They won't leave right. the hospital room. So we needed to be within a two block radius of Hennepin Healthcare. Imagine Push limits. Yeah. yeah, trying to find property next to a billion dollar stadium. And uh, we, we literally just drew a circle and started talking to every building and landowner that we could find. And that's when we found George Sherman, who is a developer, and uh, he was building this building that we're now in, which is a 10 story building right across the street from the armory and it's from beautiful. Thrivent. And uh, and he we said to him, like, George, you're building this building we wanna be part of it. And not only do we wanna be a part of it, we wanna own part of it. And so he's like, you wanna carve out a section of level two, Skyway level, and you wanna own that while well, I own the nine stories above it for apartments. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> and believe it or not, he said, okay, we'll figure it out. Get the lawyers going. Get the lawyers and he, and I mean, he is such a giver. Um, for those that don't know George Sherman and Sherman Associates, they build so much affordable housing in downtown Minneapolis and uh, just an incredible human. Um, he, he is the reason we have this building because you, you imagine trying to find a spot next to the hospital is not easy. Right. And so it took several years to get to this point, but in May of 21, we, we broke ground in the, right here where we are, the building started to be built. And just last week we received our keys to come in and start doing, yeah, as you see, cool. the mural behind us by Adam Turman, which is a, a local artist uh, representing the fire community. And, and here we are. So it's been pretty cool. And now you guys are coming to put our logos yeah. on the windows. Yeah. So for those of you that are listening to this amazing story, we'll do a little uh, video as well that we'll put the link to the video in. And um, Chris will show us uh, these apartments are very nice. Um, so when these families come, it really is like you live or you're there hanging out in a very nice hotel. Yeah. And it just made it, it's really homey, though. You know, it, 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 there's some nice common spaces here. Um, we're adding some cool logos uh, to, to the windows just to add some add some kind of personality to the, you know, to the space. Um, so we'll definitely be posting the video. Um, also, there's some great videos I learned when I went to your site on YouTube, yeah. kind of learning the story. Um, it's really neat. And there's just so much need for this stuff. And I know at first I was like, is this your full time job? Because <laughs> the way you talk about it and your passionate passion level about it, one would think from the outside, like this is your deal 100 yeah. percent of the time. But then to learn, you actually have another full time <laughs> software sales gig and all yeah. that. So, I mean, things like this wouldn't be able to become a reality if it, I mean, you talk about George Sherman, is it yeah. that developer? But again, if there wasn't somebody like you and, you know, Jake, the founder, if, um, if there wasn't people like you stepping up, you know, yeah. there, this wouldn't be a reality. And I, I guess, you know, for all of us watching and listening, um, sometimes you maybe might not maybe have the financial wherewithal or anything, but if you have time for, you know, your local community, um, just giving back, yeah. um, just volunteering. I, there's just so many people that are in need. I mean, honestly, you guys have a great setup here, but you might need a couple. Unfortunately, there's always bad things happening. Yeah. Um, and maybe you're going to be a role model now to other um, associations like yourself in other yeah. states, or do you see this going um, outside of Minnesota for your future? Or? Yeah, well, interestingly, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but Hennepin Healthcare is kind of a catch all for like a seven state region. If you're injured bad enough, if you're burned bad enough, you're life lighted here. 
and then your family gets in the minivan and they drive here with a backpack and they don't realize they're gonna be here for weeks, if not months. So we do support the upper Midwest region. Um, with that being said, because of that, other areas like Fargo and Duluth and others are, are inquiring about how can they duplicate a model like this. Okay. And we've kind of held back and said, well, let's perfect it first. And then let's go help other communities that really want to get together and do something similar like this. So yeah. that would be the goal. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, it just takes someone to start. Like you said, let's yeah. start it just like any business, I guess. Right. Let's start yeah. it. Figure things out. You're going to learn things yeah. along the way. Um, well, very cool. I mean, we'll, we'll give you guys the fans or the audience here. We'll give you a little tour of the space. Um, if you can, do you have a donation? Of course, website? of course we do. We're a nonprofit. And so all of what you'll see was donated, including every window in this building uh, on our floor was donated by Anderson windows. Uh, all of the furniture was donated by Ashley furniture and furniture and things. Uh, patio furniture outside was, was donated by uh, plants and things. There's, there's just so many people and organizations that give that really make this building possible, right? So if it wasn't for donations, you know, we wouldn't have a $7 million building with 12 apartments taking care of first responders and burn survivors. So firefightersforhealing.org, firefightersforhealing.org is our website. And there's a donate button right there. And then of course, all of our videos and information about our burn camp uh, in Cross Lake, as well as the Transitional Healing Center where we are today. Very cool. We'll put all those links on uh, our social and our newsletter and everything. So if you guys have questions about the organization or how you can donate, uh, reach out to me and then I can put you in touch with Chris or you can go directly to their website. But it's been very cool to see this space. Yeah. And um, I know I, I appreciate what you're doing. I mean, just as I'm sure to see the look on these families faces when they come in, you're like, oh, wow, we get to stay here. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be pretty neat. So keep it up. Thank you. I'm sure everyone says thank you. We need more people like you doing great <laughs> things. This world would be a much better place, but one thing at a time, right? Well, I would encourage people to just look for their opportunity uh, to find a way to give back. It's truly been the biggest blessing of my life to be able to, you know, give back in this way. And ironically, my personal life and my business life have come together where a lot of the businesses I work with have become supporters of this location, this mm. building, Anderson Windows being one of them, 3M is another, Polaris is another. I work with all those local businesses and, and they've come forward learning who I am as a person yeah. to support this mission. So, you know, find a way, I'd encourage everybody to find a way to take your personal life and your and, and find a passion and bring those two to, to, together, it's tremendously fulfilling. Uh, and then you look back and it's been a decade and you go like, wow, here we are. This is yeah. incredible. And it'll be a legacy for decades to come yeah. of healing in downtown Minneapolis. Yeah, that's really important. That's such a great point. What do they say? Like, leave the world like a better place. You know, you touch people through, you know, throughout the week or the day or depending what you're doing, but really to you know, we're only here for a short time, right? Yeah. So uh, what can you do that, you know, will keep the good flowing when yeah. you're not around, right? right? What's your legacy? <laughs> right. what, what's your legacy going to be? Yeah. And how do you want to be remembered? And I hope that in some way I'm remembered here by providing a space of healing for other people, literally for decades to come. Yeah. yeah. Well, you will. Well, thanks, Thank man. You. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yep. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.